All right, Alexander, we have got more infighting in Europe. And of course, the bad man this time, as is most of the time, is uh, Viktor Orban, the leader of Hungary. And this stems from a law that was passed by, uh, by the Hungarian government and uh, the parliament. Uh, it has to do with uh, the promotion of LGBTQ um, content, I guess is the best way to put it, for under 18-year-old kids in school. I mean, there's a lot to the law. It's, they say it's very similar to the one that Russia passed many years ago, and Russia got a lot of uh, flack for that one. I believe it was during the Sochi Olympics, right before the Sochi Olympics, and uh, they got a lot of flack for, for that law. At the end of the day, it's people forgot about it, I guess, and it's, you know, it's, we've moved on. It's, it's a similar law. It's not exactly the same. Actually, critics say the Hungarian one is a little more um, extreme. That's what the critics are saying. Uh, but in essence, it's about the same thing. Um, once again, it has to deal with under 18-year-old uh, uh, kids. It doesn't affect people over 18 years old. Anyway, the EU is, is blowing a gasket about this. They actually tried to get UEFA to get involved in this as well and paint the Allianz Stadium in rainbow colors. A whole media campaign is, is, is behind this. At the end of the day, Alexander, I don't think we really need to focus on the law per se, because I don't really think this has to do with the law at all. I, don't, I think this is just a cover. Yeah, it gives the leaders like Ursula and, and Macron and, and uh, Michelle, it gives them uh, a stage to virtue signal a little, a little bit, and they like that. They love to virtue signal and talk about European values and rights while they lock down the continent for uh, a year and a half, while they continue to, to just be quiet about the imprisonment of Julian Assange, while they uh, sanction countries like Belarus and uh, started wars in Ukraine and Syria. But anyway, European values, raid banks of member countries, austerity, European values, Alexander. At the end of the day, though, this is about continuing to find ways to go after Viktor Orban, the prime minister of Hungary, and get him out of office. That's their end goal. They need Orban out. And they need him out because for various issues, he doesn't play ball. I'm not saying all of the issues, but on various issues, he just doesn't play ball with the globalist EU elite. Is this correct? Absolutely, it's correct. I mean, first of all, I mean, you know, Hungary, Poland, many of the Eastern European countries are Christian conservative countries. This is well known when they were admitted into the EU. By the way, many of the countries of Southern Europe are also Christian conservative countries. Um, so, I mean, again, this is well known when they joined the EU. This is a radical um, position that some countries have taken, which is trying to change the social attitudes of these countries and using all the mechanisms of the EU to do it. But as you rightly said, this is a big topic. Um, why is Orban specifically, why is Hungary being targeted for doing things that are not very different to what, say, Poland is doing? Poland is doing similar things. Why is Hungary being targeted? It is precisely because Orban is seen as the sovereignist, the statist, the person who uh, wants to make Hungary a, a strong voice in not just EU affairs, but individual affairs, in, in European, sorry, world affairs. And so they don't like him. And they've been doing everything they possibly can to uh, remove him. And in this, this particular case of this particular law, what, of course, he is doing is popular in his own country. It's supported by most of the people. But that somehow makes him a dictator when he does it. I mean, it's the kind of twisted logic that you get in this kind of scenario. But of course, they're after him. They have been after him for a long time because it's not just a case of him being doing things they don't like. He does these things and he succeeds. And that's what they can't bear. I mean, he Hungary is thriving where before... It had been, well, before he took it over, it had been a wreck. <laughs> he, he went against their economic policies or their economic orthodoxies. He turned Hungary round and he's pursuing an independent foreign policy and he's into pursuing an independent social policy and he makes no secret of the fact that he's a Christian. On the contrary, he, he, he makes it a major 
political point that he uh, a major point of his political attractiveness and they can't bear it and it drives them mad so now they're trying to find some issue some pretext where they think they can push him out yeah he um, you know I, I can think of a couple of issues that happened recently and in the past one of them is that he actually approached Russia for the shot that pissed off the the EU they really got pissed off about that um, because, you know, they, the EU has to act as a one unit when they make decisions. And, uh, and Hungary going to, to Russia for the shot was just a big no-no. So they got really pissed off uh, about that move. Uh, they, got, they got pissed off about the fact that he went after George Soros. We've done many videos of this in the past as well. He started to ban many of the Soros regime change NGOs and universities. And everyone knows that Soros bankrolls a lot of the EU parliament uh, members and God knows who else the Soros NGOs bankroll in the European Union. He did that. Uh, they got really pissed off uh, with Orban about that as well. He uh, He's also promoting a lot of uh, conservative values and uh, he wants to, you know, bump up the birth rate in Hungary as well. So he gives tax incentives and complete tax write-offs. If you have, a, you know, a family of, say, two or three children, you get major tax breaks. I believe if you have more than three children, you don't even pay tax. So he's doing, uh, he's implementing programs like this, independent of the European Union, which pisses them off. And I think the most important point about Hungary, Alexander, and you can get into this, is uh, going to their uh, economy. They're not in the euro. And because they're not using the euro currency, the EU can't uh, bully them as much as they would like in the same way they bullied much of the southern European countries, which was either you're going to do as we say, and if you don't do what we say, well, then we're not going to give you uh, liquidity. We're not going to give you the euro fiat. We're going to close your ATM banks. We're not going to deliver uh, currency to your central banks, to your country's central banks. And, what, and when they do that as a country, if you're using the euro uh, fiat, you're screwed. I mean, you're screwed. People can't go to the bank machine and pull out cash. And you have to start, you have to start putting capital controls and all kinds of things like that. The fact that Hungary has their own currency does give Orban a lot of wiggle room to follow an independent sovereignist policy, internal and external. Absolutely correct. That's entirely right. So he's he's able to do all of these things without feeling the weight of the EU's wrath in the way that other countries that are part of the euro system do. And again, he's made it perfectly clear that he doesn't want Hungary in the in the euro. And that, of course, is a profoundly shocking thing for the Europeans, because from the European point of view, the intention is that eventually every single EU state will join the euro that's 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 the that's the project so that's what they want that's what they want to see achieved and that's something that he's holding out against he is a he is from their point of view the arch rebel the the the, the heretic if you like the person the the revolutionary the person who is there pointing all the time at the emperor saying the emperor has no clothes what the emperor is doing is a tyrannical and oppressive we don't want to have anything to do with it let's uh, go our own way and they can't bear that so of course what you do is you find all kinds of little laws that he passes be it on the courts be it on this issue the specific issue we're talking about and then you set him up and then at some point sooner or later you try and get a, a assemble together a union of all the other states to throw him out at which point of course he will go even further his own way because what the EU would discover if it ever gets to that point which at the moment is most unlikely to by the way because lots of other Eastern European countries will probably rally around him but what they would if if they ever achieved their intention what they would probably discover is that Hungary would thrive even more I mean that's that's the that's the paradox. Yeah, yeah. So finally, you have Mark Root and the Netherlands just coming out and saying it. And here's what uh, what Mark Root said. He is saying that Hungary should leave the bloc, should be told to leave. That's Mark Root from the Netherlands. And he says this, and I'm going to quote: "This is a fundamental. This is a fundamental point." Um, well, sorry, sorry. If Hungary refuses to withdraw its anti-LGBT plus law. 
then as far as I'm concerned, there is nothing left. There is nothing left for them in the EU. This is a quote. This is such, such a fundamental point that if we let that go, we are nothing more than a trading block and a currency. Root went on to tell the press, we have to, this is a quote, Alexander, we have to get him to his knees. This is the Prime Minister of Netherlands to another member country which has passed a law, whatever that law is, I don't even care about the law, whatever it is. I don't agree with that law, so we have to get you to your knees. That is a quote, Alexander. Once again, I'm going to reiterate, restrictions for a year and a half, austerity in Southern Europe, bank raids, wars in Syria, wars in Libya, sanctions in Belarus, regime change operations in Ukraine, and Julian Assange, they're completely quiet about you. No, no. Anyway, I'm just pointing out I, the hypocrisy. No, I mean, what you're, do you make of those quotes from Mark Root? Well, it's the authentic voice of the European Union, because let's be straightforward about it. He is at the core of the European Union, and it's the core of its doctrines. Now, look, look just unpack what he said. I mean, all right, the, the, the absolutely horrific thing about keep, you know, pulling a, a, the leader of a sovereign state down to his knees, which is outrageous behaviour and completely inappropriate behaviour. But think also of what he said, where, you know, if, if he's able to get away with that, we're only an economic, a trading block with a currency. Well, some people would probably say that's what it should be. Or rather, a trading block minus the currency. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's, 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 a, if only, you know, it's if an, only, if only, as I said, it's, it's become an ideological project now, uh, um, to spread the kind of ideology that, that Mark Rutte himself, um, adheres to. I, I don't have anything else to say exactly. That that's what yeah. it should be a trading yeah. block. Yeah. And a currency. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Well, or, 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 you know, an exchange system, but not the kind of euro system that we have now, which <laughs> operates in a... Well, anyway, we, we've talked about this in so many, so much detail. Well, yeah, no, it, it, Europe was not meant to be this ideological no. uh, thing. No. It wasn't meant to be this no. European values thing. European values mean nothing. They don't, they don't no. t European values don't tell me anything. I understand no. what the values of, say, Greek society are. I understand what the values of Syrian no. society are. Many people watching us, I'm sure, have the values of their own specific country and culture as well. European values don't tell me anything, especially when you point out all the European hypocrisies that have taken place. And I'm just saying it off the top of my head now. I'm sure we could create a massive list of all the European hypocrisy um, misery, the absolute human rights misery that Europe has spread across the absolutely. world. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, they're Dutch values. I mean, he wants to make everybody, every place. I mean, you go to Amsterdam, you'll see, you'll see what Amsterdam is like. He wants, he wants Hungary, Budapest, to be like Amsterdam. Essentially, that's that's what it's all about. So, um, you know. A, a, a tiny minority of states, or rather cultures, want to impose their ideas on every other one. And as I said, countries which are much more conservative, much more Christian than a country like the Netherlands is today. Um, you know, who is imposing what upon whom? Why not let everybody live yeah. their own lives? Exactly. You know what I say to wrap it up? Uh, if the Hungarian people don't like Orban and don't like his laws, you have elections and you can uh, vote him out and you can change the laws. At the end of the day, let the Hungarian people decide what they want for their country. Correct. Yeah, we'll uh, leave it there, guys. Go to our locals and uh, join in the conversation. Let us know what you think about this topic and Durant shop 10% off when you use the code real news. Take care.